So in the last video we came up with a very important realization which was that functionally or geometrically multiplying by negative 1 multiplying by negative 1 has the effect of rotating a vector 180 degrees. So now I'm going to ask the all-important question, which is, what if we wanted to rotate ninety degrees? Now bear in mind, we really we're in just two dimensions right now, aren't we? I'm sorry, we're in one dimension right now. Um, this is our real number line. This is the real number line, and we've got our zero here. Okay, and we're, we're operating in one dimension. You've got positive numbers and negative numbers. And so, rotating 90 degrees kind of is going to, is whatever it does, it's going to have to send us into some new, uh, almost like a new universe or a new part of the world. So, let's take our simple example here. We're at 6. Here's my vector. I'm over at 6. We know that multiplying by negative 1 is going to bring me to negative 6. So multiplying by negative 1 is going to rotate me here to negative 6. The question is, what can I multiply by to rotate me 90 degrees? So 90 degrees, so let's say, let's call that something. Let's say there is something that I can multiply by that's going to rotate me here. Okay, it's going to rotate my vector here and then I'll be facing upwards. I have length 6. My vector should have length 6. I don't want to change the length. So I, I know I didn't make this as... I should make it straight. Or, I mean as long as the 6 there. Multiplying by that, whatever that... I'm, I'm putting just an uh, empty square there. Whatever that is, if I multiply by it, I get to 90 degrees. I rotate 90 degrees. Well. One thing I do know is that if I, if if multiplying by that square rotates me 90 degrees, then multiplying by it twice, multiplying by it again, should bring me here to negative 6. But we know that multiplying by negative 1 would bring me to negative 6. So what are we saying? We're saying that this thing multiplied twice, right? The thing that rotates me 90 degrees you know, if I rotate 90 degrees and then rotate 90 degrees again, that should have the same effect as multiplying by negative 1. So again, let's just recap. Multiplying by negative 1 is going to bring me from 6 to negative 6. And so multiplying by this square twice has the same effect as multiplying by negative 1. So multiplying by the square twice equals negative 1. Well, that means that the square squared is equal to negative 1, this hidden hidden number. And that means that this square, if we square root both sides, is what you know as the square root of negative 1, which is our imaginary number, i. So all along, multiplying by that i is what gives you a rotation of 90 degrees. Okay, now notice this does something. It, it brings us into the, uh, another uh, the second dimension, right? We are in one dimension here at the real number line. Multiplying, introducing this concept i now is going to have to introduce a new axis. So this gives us, this gives us the imaginary axis. So here it is below. I'm just going to call that the imaginary axis, and this is the real axis. And this is where our complex numbers come from. And so now we can see clearly that here I am at 6 on the real number line. And if I multiply by i, I land here at what I call 6i. 
So, um, so what are we going to, let's, let's note this then, multiplying by, this is an important conclusion, multiplying by i, multiplying by i gets us a point, gets us a point uh, on the imaginary axis. with a length of 6 in a direction ninety degrees or rotated ninety degrees clockwise, counterclockwise So that is the effect of multiplying by negative 1. I mean by i. Multiplying by negative 1 rotates 180 degrees. Multiplying by i. Multiplying by i rotates rotates 90 degrees. Okay? So and and again in the algebra it makes sense too because multiplying by i twice is i squared. So i squared we know is negative 1. And geometrically, it makes sense, too, because multiplying by i twice is rotating 90 degrees and then 90 degrees again, which is the same as multiplying by 180 degrees. All right? So now, so this one idea is really what's behind this whole, or it's one way to view the motivation for the imaginary axis and imaginary numbers. Um, so I'm, hope, I'm hopefully, uh, I've hopefully succeeded in trying to, help you understand where it, com where it comes from, at least from a math perspective. Um, and so in the next video, we'll do a few problems, but uh, this, I think, is, is an important video. So you could, it, should, it should help you understand a little bit more why, uh, where complex numbers come from and why the imaginary number, uh, though it's imaginary, it has a good reason or a good basis for existing.